Hey guys, my name is Seth Rosenblum, and welcome to these 10 licks in the style of Eric Clapton. Now, Clapton has one of the longest and most storied careers out there, from his time with John Mayall and the Blues Breakers, uh, to Cream, to his acoustic stuff, to other electric albums, all his blues playing. So this is by no means a total guide to his playing since it has evolved over time, but what I tried to do here is give you some of the, uh, the feel and vibe of his playing so that whether you're really familiar with Eric's playing or not, this will get you started on, uh, on learning some of his licks and kind of learning what he's all about. <laughs> So this phrase works uh, in the key of C. So our chords for a C blues would be a C7, F7, and G7. And here we're starting on this one and a half step bend. So pretty big bend here. And we're starting kind of in the uh, position five, I think we'd consider it, of the pentonic, where if this is our position one of the pentonic and C, we're going down one shape right here. And we're starting. And then we're doing, uh, going back up to the kind of position one, doing this little microtonal half step bend. And just playing a few notes right out of the pentonic there. Now, a lot with Eric Clapton is the feel, and it's kind of this very almost proper feel to a lot of the ways he plays things. So pay attention to the rhythm and the timing, and nothing's better for getting a sense of this than to, to go listen to some of Eric's playing. And it's always had this same rhythmic feel, whether it be the uh, stuff with John Mayall, like Steppin' Out, one of his great songs, all the way to his recent blues playing. So check that out, and uh, this, is, this is a great lick to uh, get you started on uh, some Clapton. <laughs> So this lick can be used in a couple different contexts, but here, uh, and how Eric often uses it, is to outline the five chord, in this sense, uh, in the key of C. So that chord would be a G. And we're ending right on that G to outline it. And you could even use this same lick again, but move it down a whole step to then outline the four. And then resolve it to one. So it's a nice little moving lick. It shows uh, some of the slides that uh, happen a lot in Eric's playing, where we're starting in the position one of the pentonic here on the D string. And we're sliding up just really for a couple notes and then back down. And making those really smooth uh, helps give that sound that Eric gets on those. Again, you can use this to outline both five and four, something like this. So it's a really nice thing to have as part of your, uh, your arsenal and kind of lick vocabulary for turnarounds. So this is a lick very similar to one that a lot of blues players will use. It's in the key of C. And right out of that pentonic shape, we're starting with kind of this, uh, this roll of the first finger on the uh, eighth fret to get the B and E. 
And then we're bending up to actually the same note we've just played to that C, but here at the uh, 11th fret of the B string. And then we're just walking down the scale. Now, you notice at the eighth fret of the G, Eric is famous for always giving that a little bit of a microtonal bend. He's one of the players that you'll see more than most bend, whether it's kind of a microtonal or quarter step, half step, or even sometimes whole step with the first finger. So this gives a nice bluesy flavor just in this little descending phrase. So once again, we're in the key of C here for this phrase, but we've moved up the neck a bit. We're starting here at the 15th fret of the B string with a little bend. <laughs> And Clapton uses a lot of these, uh, these half-step ends where we could just play. But he's giving that little up and down. Because we are going back from unbent to uh, bent to unbent again, down to the 13th fret, down on the G string. Uh, and it gives this really nice arc, and then uh, he, this is kind of a classic Clapton hammer-on pull-off. You hear him do a lot of really quick hammer-ons and pull-offs, and this is one that you can pretty easily grasp. It's just at the 12th to 15th fret here of the G string. And you really want to almost accent that top note. And you can break this lick in to use these two pieces separately, or they fit together nicely this way. So you could just use this part, or just this part, but they work together in sort of a call and response way, so that's why I put them all together in one phrase. So you'll notice this, uh, this phrase is pretty similar to lick four, uh, also in the key of C and starts the same way, except here we stay up and actually ascend with it a bit. It's another example of one of these Clapton little uh, pull-offs. So it's that this time. And uh, then instead of going down with our call and response, we're going to go up here. So similar concept, but just another little twist. Uh, Clapton, like a lot of blues players, not the biggest vocabulary, but it's all about taking things that you know and being able to use them in different ways to uh, kind of make, make your vocabulary even bigger than it is. So once again for this lick, we're in the key of C, and this is kind of a little circular repeating lick with a cool bend in the middle. So uh, we're starting up here in kind of the second position of the pentonic. And from uh, that third note of the phrase, we're bending up a whole step without picking again. And then going back down to the 11th fret. So the whole circle is this. And then we're starting over on that note. So you can go as many times as you want here, starting from this. Yeah. 
and you can use it kind of uh, to build, build some energy in a solo and at a high point where it'll really, really do well to have something that's kind of staying on the same thing. And then when you resolve this to something else, it'll make that even more dramatic. So uh, this lick, once again, is kind of a circular thing where we have up at the 17th fret of the uh, B string, uh, we have in the position there of the pentonic, if we're in A, we have, we're playing the 20th fret and pulling off to that 17th fret on the B. And then we're playing the 17th fret on the G. Now, where normally you'd want to kind of roll the first finger and not have those notes ringing out, you'll notice with Clapton that he often does let those notes ring out. And we're just doing that little three note thing until we end it with the whole step bend at the 20th fret of the B. So something like this. <laughs> And these, uh, these circular licks work really well to build that momentum because as soon as you play anything else and kind of break the cycle, it's even more dramatic than if you had just played from phrase to phrase. But sometimes staying on one phrase for a bit is the most effective thing to build some energy in your solo. <laughs> So here we're uh, once again in the key of A, and we're going to use a note here from outside of the pentatonic that we're actually going to land on, and that's a two. So we're up here at the 17th fret, right in that position of the pentatonic, and we're playing all on the E string at first. So we're playing the 17th fret, 19th fret, which is the second in the key of A, the B, bending up a half step, which gets us to that C that's in the pentatonic. Back down to uh, the two, up to the, back down to the one, and then we go all the way up where our kind of standard bend at the, uh, in this case, 20th uh, fret of the E string, the uh, flat three. We go up there and end the phrase going back down to A. So this is a very, uh, very Clapton style lick where we're using those uh, little whole, uh, half step bends and then going to a big whole step to end the lick. <laughs> So here we have a phrase in the key of G, and we're starting by doing another one of these little uh, slides. And then we're going to play that note at the sixth fret of the B string twice. Clapton does this a lot where instead of going up and playing something like this, he'll repeat one of the notes in the middle and just uh, use it as a way of accenting that note a little more. And once again, rhythmically, it has this very proper feel. And you hear that in a lot of Eric's playing, where it's very kind of right on the beat. He's not doing too much pushing or pulling. And as soon as we go up with that shift, we're coming right back down, where we could play this whole lick without shifting once. But it doesn't have the same sound staying in position there. It's some of that slide that gives it that little attitude. This is a, a really great example of it's not always what notes you play, it's how you play them. Taking something where you could play it in one position and adding in either a bend or a slide or a hammer on or pull off can do 
all the, uh, all the good in the world of making it sound different, giving it a little more attitude, and maybe changing something that you already play into something a bit new. <laughs> So this is a line very, uh, very along the lines of classic blues phrases that you'll hear most players play, whether it's Stevie Ray Vaughan, Eric Clapton, B.B. King, Albert King. But I think it's important to put in here just because a big part of blues, once again, is how you play something. And it's showing kind of how Clapton approaches this. So he's playing it with a little, uh, little hammer on start. <laughs> and playing it much more by the book without a lot of other bends or, uh, or accents to it. So we're right inside a uh, G minor pentatonic. Although this is a phrase that's very easy to move keys and put anywhere. And you can use this as a starting phrase to get into your turnarounds, kind of wherever makes sense for it. So it's just all about listening to the player that you're trying to emulate and picking up on the nuances in their playing. If you're interested in taking your guitar playing to the next level, check out Pick Up Music. We have hundreds of lessons from the world's top guitar players. It's the best way to get to the next level, especially if you're an intermediate player. There's a 14-day free trial, so you can start free, try it out, and let us know what you think.